No vegans were harmed in the making of my fucking YouTube channel. Well, welcome to another motherfucking feedback. Um, a little bit of channel news. I'm planning on doing this as a weekly thing now. Just kind of a, it's more of a podcast style video where I just respond to different things that are on my mind. Most of them are related to my diet and fasting, but every once in a while I might just go off on a complete fucking tangent and talk about whatever the hell's on my mind, whatever's pissing me off, whatever you know, whatever makes me fucking happy, you know, there's a lot of shit I'm into, I'm into photography, I'm into uh, some computer gaming, a little bit of Android gaming, um, I fly drones sometimes, you know, it hasn't been quite ready weather-wise for me to go out there and do that this year yet, but you know, as this channel grows, I've I've gotten some requests for more fucking content, you know, more, you know, interest in my other activities and talking about the other shit I do. Unfortunately, um, financially, I have to dedicate a lot of time to what pays the bills, and that's my photography right now. As this grows, I can shift more attention to this channel, so you can help that by liking, subscribing, sharing, you know, whatever gets more views because views equals dollars on YouTube you know I'm not here to ask for donations or none of that shit I might eventually start selling some digital stuff on here pictures or, or music I've had requests to sell the shitty music that I fucking make and I've you know started to set up to, to start recording music again and um, you know but once again requires fucking time which I don't have a shit ton of when it comes to the amount of work I have to do for clients and the amount of stuff I do for you guys. But that being said, we're about to hit a thousand subscribers here, and this has probably been, you know, I've run, I've done YouTubing in the past, and this has probably been the best channel that I've ever done. As far as audience, I mean, you guys have been fucking great, to be honest with you. You guys have been supportive of a lot of the shit I do and you've also told me a lot of things that helped me go out and learn. You fill in a lot of the knowledge gaps that I don't get just researching this horse shit on my own. You know, you guys are always offering me links to shit and documentaries to watch and articles to read and believe it or not, I do follow up on when I have time on a lot of these things. Um, and I, I like the feedback. I like the interaction. I even like the debate. Some of you don't agree wholeheartedly with uh, some of my philosophies and some of the things I kind of preach on here that have gotten me to where I am with my weight loss and my health in general. And that's fine. I, I encourage that kind of construct, you know, as long as we're not calling each other cunts, it's all fucking good. I mean, really, you know, as long as we're constructively arguing our points and we don't take it personally, and we, you know, because so many fucking people get butt hurt nowadays. If you look at Facebook, it's a big butt hurt contest, you know this political versus that political this view versus that view you got one person that gives their unabashed uncensored fucking opinion to all of the people that they know on their friend you know their friends you know you'd think they fucking get along but for some reason facebook just seems to bring out the worst in people but they go on there and they fucking spew out their little fucking rant and piss off all of their friends with opposing viewpoints. You get people butt hurt and fucking deleting them and blocking them and it's just a I've I've kind of pulled back from Facebook quite a bit since uh you know I'm starting to notice people are a lot more fucking sensitive on there. And there's a lot of sensitive people out in the world. Even here on YouTube there's uh quite a few people who are just too sensitive if you especially if you fucking disagree with them you know I'm not one of those people as long as you don't get personal with me I could have a debate all day you know and in the end if we don't agree we can agree to disagree you know that's 
kind of my thing. That being said, I don't hold back on my fucking opinions when it comes to fasting and this kind of stuff. There are topics I don't discuss because of the polarizing nature of them. I'm not poli- I'm not going to get political on my channel because that is probably the most divisive fucking thing going on in our country today. And I choose, you know, not to participate in that fucking bullshit you know everyone treats it like a sports team they're rooting for their favorite team and all of this shit and losing track of what's important in the process and it's it's just continually going downhill and that's all i'll have to say on that the subject of politics um i don't have the comment handy but one of you did suggest i watch fat sick and nearly dead Now, I've made it no secret I don't have a lot of respect for vegans, Um, mainly because their diet is motivated more by political agendas of not eating the poor little fucking animals than it is about your health. Um, which is fine, uh, you know, you want to save a few chickens from getting fucking slaughtered, or you want that poor fucking grain-fed fucking cow to not get hit in the head with a sledgehammer or whatever the fuck they do to slaughter them. That's fine, that's your prerogative. Um, but you see, you know, the I, when vegans get overly political and they try and change, you know, the rest of our diets, that you know, because we apparently are too fucking stupid to do it on our own, um, that's where I start to get in a little problem, you know, I preach a lot of what I do on here, but by no means am I saying you can't go be a fucking vegan, I'm not saying you can't go down to McDonald's and have you fucking cheeseburger, I'm not saying don't eat Pop-Tarts, I'm not saying any of that, I'm just telling you the things that I've learned throughout my journey in this fucking weight loss, to where, you know, I'm almost to my goal, I mean, I'm, I, it's in sight, of my goal and you know people just need to not you know yeah try and give your friends or your loved ones or other people that need the information that don't have it that that's all I'm this channel is really about is sharing information that a lot of people don't seem to know in regards to fat burning and regards to our hormones our our biochemistry it's all been clouded by other interests both financial interests of our government and our food industry our diet industry and even our medical industry they're all motivated to keep you coming back whereas my motivation is just to give you the information you need so that if you want to go out and you want to eat a fucking two whole pizzas with a box of donuts as long as you know what's going to happen and you're okay with that who am I to stop you I mean I've always preached uh quantity of fucking life versus quality of life and what good's living to be a hundred if you're fucking miserable with what you're doing you know and if that makes you truly happy and you're willing to live with the fact that you might die a lot sooner because of you know what you're eating and how you live and you're not you know as long as you're accepting the consequences you're not blaming anybody but your your own desire for that you know that being said a lot of the things that are causing you to be that way are kind of addictive and if you have an addictive personality especially you're pretty much not in complete control and having information on how to deal with that addiction and those problems it can go a long way to helping you fucking get out of this stupid fucking cycle we're in but anyways that being said i watched fat sick and nearly dead last night and i like where the guy's heads at to a point fasting is definitely very healthy however if you are consuming you are not truly in my book fasting you know, not the way our ancestors did. <coughs> oh. So basically, this movie is about a fucking Australian dude. Um, he has this rare fucking condition that causes him his autoimmune system to overreact to any negative stimulation it receives, and he gets red itchiness. Believe it or not, I actually went through a little bit of this during my trucking career to where I was getting the itchiness and breaking out. And it was when I was at 255 was my weight at the time. Um, And 
basically you, you just kind of have to you know take keep in mind he, he's going to get a lot of bad advice during this and somebody got him juicing now this is kind of a vegan-esque diet there's no meat or fat involved in what this guy is doing um basically he goes he takes like an apples a bunch of fucking uh vegetables and like a huge amount more than you would eat in a sitting and grinds them up into a juice and then instead of eating for 60 days he drinks this fucking juice um you can check out this shit on fat sick and nearly dead.com but you know i'm here to kind of give my fucking review of it so you might want to listen to my review and see if it's even worth your time um so anyways he goes on to do this 60 day challenge and he fucking you know he loses the weight he definitely does and cures his condition um at the same time he's doing shit tons of exercise so yeah that's fine i if this is what works for someone who am i to say anything bad is it what i would have done in his position absolutely not the reason for that is is carbohydrates it's biochemistry you can't change it with all of this shit that the way your body works insulin controls your fat storage leptin controls how hungry you are leptin and ghrelin those are hormones that can be manipulated with what you put in your mouth and how often you put stuff in your mouth taking those two controls in there and using them means you can do this without a shit ton of exercise i mean get as much exercise as you need of course but spending tons of time when you don't really want to doing that and really screwing yourself into this little cornhole where you're only drinking this green juice for 60 days you know if i was going to do 60 days i'd just do a straight up water fast and call it a day and then you know reintroduce the nutrition to my body as necessary but the fact of the matter is we're trying to attack our fat and we're trying to do it in a way that we're not hungry now what i noticed is he was having some willpower issues throughout this 60-day fast one of the reasons for that is, is his hunger levels were probably fucking through the roof it you know if you have strong willpower by all means but he did try to convert several other people to doing this during this documentary and half of them failed particularly his own older brother failed um, according to the film, he eventually managed to, to willpower his way up, but willpower is a very rare thing nowadays. I don't know if you know this, but a lot of people I've met and talked to in life don't have a lot of fucking willpower going on. So my problem with what he's doing in this juice fasting fucking craze is it's, it's really just fast all right you don't need to do a juice fast you don't need to do a fat fast if you're gonna fast fast now my first 52 pounds ish of weight loss um if you count my brief dip down to 189 during just my fasting only phase where i didn't care what i ate as long as i did the appropriate amount of fasting to make up for it during you know and i've done 72 hour fast to get down that and i touched the 189 briefly before um but my point is is during that time i managed to lose all of that weight going to the gym maybe once a week in the beginning i went to the gym a lot because that's what the motherfucker said i should do you know and who am i to fucking argue with all these fucking nutritionists and experts and personal trainers and gurus and doctors that say i have to go to the fucking gym fucking six days a week while eating 10 you know a thousand calories and maybe i'll lose some fucking weight you know i was all brainwashed just like everyone else and how to lose weight and it was only through being a free thinker and looking up the shit online on my own in unbiased research papers that i was able to learn that that was bullshit pure utter bullshit and the thing is 
is where we all have such a different, you know, we're all different. Like if you and me sat down in a room together and we're only given the same exact diet and the same amount of exercise, both of us would react differently. If we both did low, uh, low fat, high carb, fucking low calorie, goddamn diets, I can tell you, you're gonna probably, you could probably lose weight or not lose weight as fast as I do, or at all. That's how different we are, and that's how many factors are involved in how we are made. That you need to keep that in mind. You can't have a one size fits all approach. Each person's weight loss has to be tailored according to their personal chemistry that you know their own insulin resistance their own uh, metabolic rates their own health issues their own genetics there's so many factors at play and how your hormones react to what you put in your mouth that it, you just can't say okay this is you know you can't eat the goddamn animals because they're bad for you and they cause all these fucking problems when the fact of the matter is there's a lot of different shit that causes these problems you know a lot of the vegan shit that i come across which brings me to my first point um i came across this video here which is on your screen right now thanks to my advances in channel technology now this motherfucking guy named Dr. Michael Greger, he he's completely ignorant. You know, let let's go through a little bit of his video here. You know, the science behind the, the low carb and the Atkins for one. I mean, I read that book and he went through and explained exactly why this diet works. And it, I mean, to lay people. Okay, we, we buy into it. It makes sense. But what's wrong with the science that was in there? Oh, well, I mean, so the science saying we could lose weight. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's true. I mean, we could, I mean, uh, in fact, I mean, any, any diet, it, basically any diet that says Americans can't eat donuts is a diet that's going to get Americans to All lose. right. Now, let me stop this motherfucker right there. I ate donuts and lost weight. I ate Pop-Tarts and lost weight. I ate fucking cheeseburgers, fucking you name it. I ate it. Now, the way I lost my weight had absolutely nothing to do with what I was eating. It had to do that I was doing fasting, lengthy fasting, 24, 36s, 72s, all to manipulate my insulin, giving me direct access to my fat, and you need longer fasts to do this if you're eating that shit. But the fact that I was able to lose 50 pounds while eating the things that he says I shouldn't be fucking eating illustrates that it is fucking hormones that decide where the fucking shit you eat goes. You could be eating in a calorie deficit and still be storing fat based on what your hormones are doing. Did you know that? You could be eating your fucking, you know, 1,800 calories or 1,600 or 800 calories and temporarily be storing the fat before you get a chance to access it. Now, a lot of people manage to lose weight like this because they fucking, they go out and they burn off their glycogen very quickly in the gym, you know. You know, they're not storing as much as they're burning, so they get through the glycogen and they get to their fat but when you're fasting and to a greater degree if you're low carbing on top of fasting and doing a ketogenic diet the minute you walk in the gym you're burning you're rating your fat no problem you're burning fat while you sleep you're burning fat when you take a shit you're burning fat when you're watching TV if you're eating carbs and eating them often even if you're in a calorie deficit, when you're sitting on your ass and you're not out exercising, you're not touching your fat at all. It's really that simple. So, it's basically what you eat and how long you go in between meals is how you determine your weight loss. It is what you do to manipulate fuck 
It's what you do to manipulate your hormones that determines whether you store fat, whether you lose weight. And there are all kinds of things you can do to manipulate them. Uh. But let's continue arguing with this fucking ignorant fuck. Lose weight, right? So no matter and, and so whether it's the anti-gluten people and all of a sudden you can't eat donuts or whether it's the low carb, whatever reason, right? Or don't they don't eat uh, you know food starting the letter D diet. I mean whatever would do it. Um, and so I mean so certainly get, again getting rid of the refined carbs, excellent. And and that and I think low. No, I agree. Refined carbs do not help you. I, you know, I managed to do it, but it wasn't fun because I was hungry a lot. I was pretty much on the roller coaster ride. My fucking water weight was up and down like a roller coaster. I, you know, it wasn't the best way to lose weight. If I had known at the beginning what I know now, I would have approached this shit a whole lot differently. And that's what I'm going to do with my fucking weight loss series is go over some of that. And, you know, but there's a lot of misinformation out there. A lot of people doing, successfully losing the weight, doing it the insanely hard way. Now, some people will claim they enjoy that. Not me. I don't enjoy doing that shit. I mean, it's bullshit. What the fuck? Why would you work twice as hard to get to the same spot? You know, let's be a little more efficient. And this goes a long way to sustainability. I mean, how many years are you going to be able to pound the fuck master for fucking seven days out of the week? You know, life's going to get in the way of that shit. You know, and how many years do you want to go before you could have a fucking slice of pizza at that party without being paranoid about it? Or maybe you're one of them hardcores that won't touch this shit ever. You know, despite the fact that these are pleasurable drugs you're giving up, and more power to you to be able to do that, I myself am not that way. I'm still going to want this shit. I'm still going to want pizza. I'm still going to want Pop-Tarts. I'm still going to want fucking cookies and cakes and donuts and, you know, what the fuck ever. The difference is, is I know now how to deal with these things. I know how to manage my hunger. I know how to manage my weight loss, my fat. I can see when I'm gaining weight and when I what I need to do to counteract that. It's manipulating my hormones in a way that allows me to have control of my life, to be able to occasionally enjoy the things I like. You can't enjoy them every day. That's a lesson I learned. It was a hard one to learn. And I probably suffered a little needlessly from not realizing that. Had I had done keto with fasting to begin with, I probably would have gotten a lot further a lot quicker than I did. Once again, not a sprint, but it's a marathon. You, you know, lose the weight at your own pace. Don't be in a hurry because that's a path to failure in my book. But uh, let's listen to this guy some more. I'm going to really get to the part where he's, you know, fucking up. Our movement really brought that to light. I think that was important. You know, because, of course, the, so the, you know, uh, these... the government and all the you know american heart association american cancer society everyone's saying decrease fat so of course in hopes yeah all of those organizations he just mentioned about decrease saying decreasing fat have other agendas other than your health so when people spout off to me the american fucking heart association you know the whole it you know these organizations are not unbiased they have an agenda and they're giving you misinformation to promote that ing- agenda. Do your own research. Do your own personal experiments on yourself. And you will find the right answers out there. They're out there. you got to sort through a lot of bullshit to get to them. Look at the sources of your articles. Look at the sources of you know who taught your doctors these things because a lot of doctors have this pride thing where they're never going to fucking admit they're wrong no matter how much goddamn scientific evidence you show them there are doctors out there who will continue to give you misinformation because they have a fucking inability to question their own knowledge i do it all the time i question my knowledge constantly i'm like well is this really how it goes even when i'm convinced of something if i hear 
some contrary data, I'll go look into it and I'll judge it based on its merits. And there have been a couple of times where I've done that and it's changed my outlook on a few things. That's how we evolve. That's how we grow. If you just keep pounding what somebody taught you in college over and over again without questioning it, without going, what the fuck does this mean? Why, well, if this is the case, why does this happen? That's another problem I have with the vegan philosophy is it doesn't question itself at all, it seems. It's, you know, and there's evidence out there that contradicts a lot of vegan philosophies and there's people that have had bad results. For every time a vegan says, well, I did this and lost all my fucking weight, I can find another case where somebody did that, didn't lose the weight, had mental problems on top of that. I mean, there are just so many negative reactions that just get ignored. Oh, doesn't support our fucking theory, so we can't talk about that. And that's bullshit. That's not how you fucking do science. That's not how you learn. That's not how you grow. That's how you stay stagnant and you do the same fucking bullshit the rest of your life and reap the consequences of it. So, yeah. Let's see what else. People pick up an apple, right? But of course, the food industry is like, we'll, we'll make whatever junk food flavor you want. And so all of a sudden we had, you know, intimate cookies and, you know, fat-free, crazy you know, disgusting junk. So the food industry has one thing in mind, money. So what they're going to fucking do is they're going to give you whatever the fuck you want. And they're going to try and make you want their shit. Keeping that in mind, if everyone were to go out tomorrow and be ketogenic, you would see a lot of ketogenic shit. And slowly over time, that shit would devolve into crap so you gotta you know obviously whole foods are better than processed foods for you they're healthier for you they have more nutrients in it for you there's less chemicals these are all factors to keep in mind and you know I am by no means clean 100% of the time I tolerate a lot of poison, a lot of fucked up foods in my life, mainly because I don't have money and resources to grow my own shit. I don't know where the food fucking came from. Sure, organic this, organic that, blah, 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 blah. Organic is everywhere, and it's being bastardized by the food industry to take advantage of people who are trying to be healthier. So, and they're not doing it for your health. They're doing it for the dollar. You don't... Who knows where your fucking food comes from? Yeah, there's supposed to be someone out there called the FDA that's policing your shit. And in other countries, I don't know how your shit works, but they aren't looking. They aren't. Very rare. I'm just saying. Nobody's really looking out for you. These Most of the food industry polices itself. Mainly because they don't want to lose business. You know, if something gets out bad, that's bad for business. So they're going to do their best not to poison you to death, but at the same time, they're going to want you to keep coming back, eat more of their shit, and leave the other shit on the shelf, and that is their motivation. So while it, the food companies are not most, you know, the most moral motherfuckers in the world, you can pretty much predict how they're going to react to different things because they're there to make money. And anything they can do to get your dollar, they're willing to do. So the only way to change the food companies is to change what you do. Vote with your wallet. That's basically your only power is you got the money. They want your money. They're going to do everything they can to convince you to, you know, that you should give your money to them. So use that power to manipulate things. And I'm already starting to see a little trickle of change in the supermarket. But we'll get to that by the end of this fucking long ass episode. So, anyways. Um, and so and so of course. I mean, you know, so there was. I mean, the the stats didn't change in terms of our obesity epidemic, which continued to increase. Um, and so that was certainly. Um, it should be noted that our obesity epidemic continued to increase due to the fact that we went on low fat diets, high carb diets. You know, 
And even though the amount of veganism has been on the rise, the obesity and diabetes epidemic has not gone down. It's gone up. So, honestly, is vegan healthier, healthier than the Western diet? Yes. Is veganism healthier than keto? I don't know yet. The jury's still out on that one. I'm not willing to make that call just yet. I do know that veganism isn't for me. I would not be able to sustain a vegan diet long term because of the hunger and cravings issue. Maybe if I had better fucking willpower, but as it stands, I don't have good fucking willpower, so I want something that doesn't leave me hungry and craving. I, uh, I, uh, important point. I think where, um, uh, you know, these kind of low-carb uh, theories go off the rails is this, um, is this state of ketosis. I mean, it's a, it's a, so uh, when you become so carb-depleted um, that you go into the state of ketosis, and that is a state of sickness. But Ketosis is not a state of sickness. Now, keep in mind, this is a doctor, supposedly. I didn't, you know, I didn't see a motherfucker graduate or anything, but he's trying to say... That ketones are poisonous because we piss them out. So they must be poisonous. I mean, meh, meh, meh. I, really? And ketosis is bad for you. Meanwhile, our entire biological makeup kind of revolves around it. If it wasn't for ketosis, we would have died off as a species whenever there was no grains or the vegan shit available, which happen quite often especially in the days before agriculture now in winter climates you were pretty much fucked wouldn't you say or let's not even talk about eskimos and people in the higher up climates that had to be in ketosis to survive yeah we store our food you know the the way we evolved is we would carb up in the summer and then you know fall and harvest and all of that and then through the winter we would be in ketosis and we survived because of that it's not poison ketones are not poison this guy clearly has a vegan agenda and is giving misinformation based on his agenda i'm not even going to play any more of that because that's where about he lost me you know, I was starting to be, I was trying to be objective. I was like, maybe this motherfucker knows what he's talking about on the vegan side of the house. I try and learn from the vegan side of things and, you know, ultimately it falls short. So anyways, when you're watching these documentaries like Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead and, you know, these vegan-oriented ones, they leave out a lot of important information that doesn't support their claim and I've been sharing with you that information on my fucking channel I have solved every issue that has come across during my weight loss process except for maybe plateauing but even that I know what I gotta do I just don't fucking wanna do it <clears throat> you know and that's more extreme fasting to get through the plateaus. Right now, I'm not in the mood to do a 72. Um, I am going to start doing 36s until I get down to 180. And I don't know that I'll stay at 180 because I'm doing research now that talks about this body has a set point to where it will try to store fat. Even if you're in a deficit, it'll try and reserve a lot of your energy and keep you at a certain weight. Um, and that set point's different for different people based on a whole shit ton of factors. Um, so the other thing I noticed with Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead is the motherfucker, you know, they show him pretty much way later. And he's not any thinner than me. And I'm still overweight. I'm still, I've still got belly fat. I'm still about 20 to 21% body fat, which is not healthy in you know terms for me i don't know how low i want to go you know 180 is i'm going to see what i look like at 180 what what do i feel like at 180 and then i might start trying to work to build a little muscle here and there i don't know i haven't decided yet 
All I know is I'm not obese anymore. I'm almost not overweight anymore. I'm almost a normal fucking body fat. Or, you know, my BMI might not be normal yet, but I think my body fat levels are almost there. You know, 15% is about where most people want to be body fat wise. You know, anything less than that, and you're a bodybuilder, or anything more than that, and you're risking some visceral fat and some fucking death. That being said, there were a lot of people interviewed on this fucking documentary, and a lot of them didn't know shit. And they felt like it was their own fucking fault for their condition. And to a degree it is they know they have to do something but they don't do anything about it until it's damn near too late and that's why i'm kind of a proponent of getting this information out there of having this channel and spreading the word is i want to give people the tools to decide what they want to do and try and give them the best tools for sustainability for happiness if you're not happy with what you're doing, it's, I don't care who you are, you're probably not going to make it. You're not going to last. So you have to be happy with how you're losing your weight. If you're happy being a fucking vegan, going to the gym, pounding the fuck master, and eating nothing but vegetables all the time, then do it. As long as you can maintain that the rest of your life, then you'll be healthy. If you can't maintain that, then you will regain the weight. If you go back to eating the way we have been brought up to eat, especially in the USA you're going to have health problems down the road. Now, some people are okay with that. You know, some people are like, okay, I'll have diabetes. I'll get sick. I'll be fat and overweight and I'll be happy because I get to have my fucking chicken parm with my goddamn donuts and pop tarts. You know, some people are okay with that. I myself am trying to find a balance in between. I still want those things. I'm trying to find where I can have them and not have them severely affect my health. I know they're going to still have an effect, even carving up twice a month like my current plan. But overall, I don't think... I think I'm going to be healthier than I would have been had I not done any of this shit. Had I not lost the weight I've lost, had I not made the changes with intermittent fasting that I've done to my how often I eat, and had I not manipulated my macros with ketogenics, I don't think I would be as healthy, you know, at 60, 70, you know, if I even made it that far as I will now. Now, all of this could be for nothing. I could get hit by a fucking bus, shot in the face while buying, you know, some bottled water at a vegan health store by some crazy vegan that thought that I shouldn't eat animals or something. I don't know. There's a million things that can take you out in life, you know, it's not all diet. So that being said, I'm going to enjoy my bad foods from time to time. I'm not looking to be optimal. I'm not looking to tweak the fats that I eat and the nutrients I take in for optimal health. I treat my symptoms that I don't like to have with my diet and go from there. So now, since you've hung in there this long in this fucking podcast style video, I don't know how long I'm going to make these, maybe an hour, I don't know. Let me get to some of your comments. Willie McGee wrote, you have a good attitude about this diet shit, bro. I like your style. Intermittent fasting is working for me too. I've lost 20 pounds in the last two months without sweating it. Now, a lot of people are still just intermittent fasting and not doing keto or altering their diet, and that's fine. You're going to reach a kind of a plateau a lot sooner before your goal, though, unless you are really, really hitting the gym hard um, while fasted, because that's the only way you get your direct access. The whole goal is to get direct access to your fat. That's what intermittent fasting is for. That's what keto is for. You know, it allows you to tap into your fat without having to fast for three days if you're not exercising or having to go in and do an hour and a half of cardio or two hours or in some cases three hours of cardio, depending on how bad you eat, to get to the fat. So basically you're manipulating 
your hormones to get access to your fat. And that's really all it takes to lose weight. Whatever you can do, whatever method you choose, go into the gym, fucking burn your shit, eat vegetable fucking juice until you're fucking green, and guess what? You will probably lose the weight because you will eventually get access to your fat. The other thing they'd be sad about fat, sick, and nearly dead is motherfucker wasn't eating a lo- any refined carbs. The carbs he was taking in probably would still qualify him to be in low carb range and probably guessing how often he probably had three of those drinks a day is my what i assume i don't know he didn't really say during the fucking video but even doing that he's probably only taking in 70 to 80 grams of carbs per day and if you're doing all of that exercise you're going to burn through your glycogen and get to your fat so it's really managing the amount of glycogen you have to get through in whatever way you see fit that's how you lose the weight. Okay, Sharpie Nails wrote, Excellent. Glad to see you making more videos. Trying to, anyway. I just started keto-friendly desserts after a whole year of doing keto, mostly because I figured it would send me back to being a sugar addict. As you mentioned about sugarless, sugar-free shit is right. One recipe called for sugar-free chocolate. Every package I read had 26 grams of carbs, a boatload of sugar alcohol. I could not wrap my head around carbs in sugar-free shit. She wrote stuff, but I put shit in there. Now, you made me understand because I did see a long list of ingredients that made me wonder what they were. So I said, fuck it. And... I will get 90% real dark chocolate, sweeten it with my own sweetener of choice. Yes, the sugar companies are really fucking us poor people trying to be healthy. And if I got on the baby food topic, it would make me mad and way too long. Something, blah, 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 blah. All right. So, yes. Cheese. On to reading the labels. Reading the labels fucking get you... Hold on. So yes, reading labels is definitely fucking important. You know, you gotta you gotta think. You know, if there's something on that fucking label and you don't know what it is, chances are you don't need it. Now, can you eat that shit and not die? Probably. But if you eat that shit all the time, you're increasing your risks. That's all it is, risk management. Um, which brings me to another fucking thing. One of the things on keto, this is a nice keto tip for those of you who watch this whole fucking video. One of the things that I've had trouble with is crust and pizza that didn't involve hours of prep and baking, you know, or bread-like substances to make sandwiches with. Because I do like bread, believe it or not. Um, so I've been searching the supermarkets for things that would allow me to have the bread experience or the crust experience without having to fucking sit there and bake, because I'm not a fucking baker. So this shit right here, I came across these. By the way, I'm not sponsored by these motherfuckers. I'm just giving you tips on things that you can use that don't require a lot of work, to replace some of the foods that you lose during keto. Um, these are called whole wheat pop cakes. Um, the, this brand is Coco, but I don't know if there's other brands. This is the only brand I've seen to be able to find. Um, and they're basically kind of a puffy bread-like substance. They only have three grams of net carbs per cake. Um, so one or two of these with some pizza toppings, and these I've made good pizzas with. I eat them with a fork and a knife, because some, some of it, if you overcook it, it'll dissolve a little bit. But overall, it makes a decent fucking pizza. And, uh, so I've been using these. They're worthless nutritionally. They're mainly mental. They're for helping you cope with not having bread. And that being said... For you non-gluten allergic motherfuckers, because this has gluten in it, I found these light spinach fucking wraps. Expensive as fuck, by the way. 
you know, you get six of them motherfuckers for like five bucks or six bucks or no, four bucks, something like that. You know, way more expensive than bread, obviously. Um, but only has six grams of net carbs for per wrap. So you can pretty much make you a sandwich wrap with this and get your little bit of doughy breadness goodness in it. Once again, you know, the stats on this, they got a little bit of vitamins and shit in it, but this is not pro providing you with nutrition. This is providing you with energy and mental enjoyment of your food. And that's what it comes down to for a lot of shit is mental enjoyment of your food. If you do not mentally enjoy what the fuck you're putting in your mouth, you're probably not going to keep doing it. Unless you really like suffering and misery. I don't. So. I'm currently still enjoying keto. I have been hovering between 189 and 193 since I started doing cyclical ketogenics without counting calories. And that's doing 16 to 20 hour fasts. I did do... Uh, uh, every other day diet style fast after my latest carb up and my results were kind of you know I, I gain four pounds every time I carb up four pounds without fail water weight just get sucked right on there and then I spend the next four days losing it. I'm currently on day three of losing the water weight from my carb up and sometimes I gain a little bit of fat out of that deal, maybe a pound if I overdo it or less. Um, today I weighed 192, which is the upper end still because it's only Tuesday. I finished my carb up Sunday. And it'll drop back down. Um, I may delay my next carb up because I have a social event that's not going to time properly. So I'll just stay on keto longer until the social event that I need to go to. Um, so these are all things to keep in mind on, on managing this shit. You got to come up with these little things that make the shit sustainable for you, you know? Um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to cut it off for now. Uh, let me know what you think of the new fucking way I'm doing these videos. Um, I plan on sticking with this kind of this format with my little brick wall background my little fucking screen floaty you know or showing you screen captures of things and articles that i'm reading and stuff you know to kind of discuss things and reading some of your comments and going through um if i didn't get to your comment i'm sorry i mean i could do a whole show just responding to comments and questions and i probably will do that in the next uh yeah you know, we'll just call that the thousand subscriber reward we'll do another one of these shows where i go just do nothing but go through your comments and respond to your questions um so comment on this video if you have things that you want me to address or talk about in the next video like subscribe and fucking share um, and tell me what you think of this format of where I just get on here and talk uh, about things that are on my mind and if you or if you just prefer the shorter little targeted subject videos um, which I'm still gonna do plenty of those there's always something I want to have a nice targeted shorter video about these are more just me talking and getting things off my fucking mind maybe not as entertaining as some of my smaller videos but uh Hey, it's, it's my fucking channel. I'll put fucking what I want to put on it. Yeah. I, you know, to, in closing, I don't have a problem with vegans doing what the fuck makes them happy. Go ahead. I only have a problem when they try to change what I'm doing to fit their agenda. Or they make it difficult for me to do what I'm doing. And right now, it's pretty difficult to be a keto. It is. You know, it's really hard to find the foods that we need to to do on this diet. It's a minefield of shit. And it's not just the vegans that, are, you know, have anything to do with that. In fact, vegans do help us by reducing the amount of processed foods that I have to deal with when I go shopping now. But they haven't really reduced it that much. And a lot of vegans eat a lot of processed shit. You know, because they, as long as they ain't got animals in it, it must be good for you. When the fact is, a lot of the grains and shit are just as fucked up by factory farming.
So, you know, you may think you're eating healthy as a vegan, but if you have, there's a shit ton of carbs still in your diet, more than you need. And by the way, anything over 100 grams of carbs, it's more than you need as a human being to survive. If you're consuming more than 100 grams of carbs a day, you are not eating healthy. It's that simple. You, d- you were not designed to eat that many fucking carbs. Cut it out. If you want to claim that you're healthy and that what you're doing is what every motherfucker should be doing and you're eating more than 100 grams of carbs, I'm sorry, but fuck off. That's too much. You don't need that much carbs. You do not to survive as a human being. Our biochemistry does not require more than 100 grams of carbs a day. And that's weight maintenance. If you're losing weight, 50. No more than 50 grams. And you'll lose and you'll lose your weight. Or you go and you're going to have to fucking go to the gym. You're going to have to go do all kinds of things to burn off those carbs before you can get to your fat. But we'll get into all of that in my weight loss series, which is forthcoming. I know I've been masturbating you about it for a while, but I've been busy, you know, coming up with new ways of doing this fucking channel. So I promise in the next week I will put out the introduction in that series and go over things. And basically it will be a step-by-step fucking running series that will walk you through from not knowing shit about weight loss all the way up to I lost the weight, now what? And hopefully it helps a lot of people and you know that are looking for a different way, that have tried all of this shit, they've been vegans, they've gone to the goddamn gym, they're still overweight, they don't know why, they spend all of this time struggling and fighting and struggling and starving and miserable and craving and just going through hell to try and lose weight. And here we are, you know. You're obviously still looking for a better way. And I'm hoping maybe the way I've done it helps people who have tried all that other shit and realize it wasn't the way for them. You know, just because something works for one person doesn't mean it works for everybody. But remember, I'm not a fucking expert. I'm just a fucking asshole. Have a nice fucking day.